The 96 scale reminds me of playing Mario Sunshine. Some of the time, it's very good, but some of the time, it's gonna piss you off! The 96 is a two-shot kill at pretty long range, which sounds good. Bad news though, some of those shots just decide to miss. The shots just don't shoot straight and don't have the highest percentage to hit. It's like the opposite of when Claude gets hit by a 20% gambit! Get it together, Dragon Boy! No wonder it's based off of a water jug dispenser at a Nissan dealership. Sometimes it's hot, like when it actually lands two shots in a row. This weapon is amazing! some of the time, but other times it's cold, like when you're actually aiming at your targets and you miss way too many shots. It is so frustrating! Not to mention it has a slow rate of fire, so it gives your targets plenty of chances to dodge your shots. Shooting fast enemies like brushes, who are booking it to the clam basket like an Urk High Olympic torch running towards Helm's Deep is not gonna happen. Shooting at all these amazing frog ass hippity hoppity squiffers, I'm so tired of fighting, not gonna happen. Hitting a junior who's fucking break dancing all over the place right in front of you, not gonna happen. And the 96 style is very ink hungry, so you'll repeatedly be at low ink while you're struggling to get your very slow shots to hit. Mob day be so fine, then boom, miss shots. <laughs> Now how come y'all never told me how good the 96 scale is? Sometimes. This is one of the best shooters in the entire game. It's long, it's strong, it's down to get the friction on because the 96 outranges a lot of other weapons. And can kill in two shots? That's really good! Assuming both shots land. Check out this chart of longer range shooters, fire rates versus number of shots to kill. You got the Jet Squelcher, it's got a high rate of fire, but is a four shot kill. It's a useless weapon for someone who's a who lame ass this game very tactically. You got the Shimmering and Sleek Splattershot Pro, medium rate of fire, and is designed to be a three shot kill. Then you got Big Hungus, McChungus, Big Balls McGee the 96 gal over here, which has the slowest rate of fire of these bad boys, but you only need to land two shots to get a kill. And can't the Splattershot that pro also get two shot kills if you're using the meta gear. Details not important, don't worry about it. Are you tired of getting two shot by a splash shot pro with more main power ups to put onto it than there is for my dog? Well, guess what? You also kill in two shots, plus you outrange the pro by a little bit, so with good positioning, you're able to hit them without them hitting you. Sure, you might only outrange them by a tiny bit, and they have a high rate of fire, but don't, don't, don't worry about details. Details not important. You outrange the pro, you kill them in two shots, you kill everything in two shots. That's all you need to know. Being long range and two shot kill gives you a lot of versatility. You can hang out in the back and play defense, you can go forwards, but not too far forwards, and play offense. You're pretty dang good everywhere you go. You can challenge other long range lads, and you can stay safe from short range boys if you shoot them before they get into your range. Even if they do get inside your range, you have a pretty fast kill time, so you're not totally screwed at close range. On the, on the how screwed are you Richter scale, on a scale of grip right number six, one and one quarter inch, Phillips bugle head, coarse thread, sharp point, dry raw screw, available now at the Home Depot, to Lauren's pre-time skip, I'd put you at about a, being a low health and monster hunter. Not ideal, but uh, not really that screwed at all. And while it may be inaccurate, if some of your shots miss, one of them will eventually hit, probably. Just keep trying, you're gonna have to be persistent. Your long range gives you plenty of chances to miss a few times and still get a kill before you're in any real danger. And then there's times when the RNG is so wild that it'll get you free kills and stuff you weren't even aiming at. There isn't a ton of nuance that's unique to the 96 scale. Most things that apply to ranged shooters apply here too. Try to keep shorter range foes near the edge of your range. That way you can shoot them from safety without them being able to hit you. Which will buy you some time if some of your shots miss before you're in the danger zone. If they approach you, then it'll often be a good idea to back up a little bit, then keep shooting. If you have room. You really gotta pick your battles with the 96 and play smart. Lots of times it'll be better to let your opponents come into your range than for you to approach them first. It's like a, it's like romance. Sometimes you gotta play it cool and let them come to you. Wait, that's not very good advice. Anyways, rule number one is shooting at long range with 96 scal. Keep your feet on the floor. It's like reverse floor is lava. Floor is money? I don't know. If you're jumping around while shooting, the RNG gives you a big old middle finger. And the luck of your shots go from Las Vegas slots to Mario Sunshine Pachinko level. Yeah. 
Yes. Yes, just fall. <laughs> just oh, oh, oh my god! Are you fucking kidding me? What happened? What happened? I don't recommend being the one to initiate a fight at close range with 96 unless you're at point blank range or you're able to flank and surprise someone from behind, which this weapon is pretty good at. However, if you're forced to fight when you're close enough to gaze lovingly into their eyes then jumping around and dodging to maneuver can actually work. There's a lot less room for shot deviation when you're close up. The first shot of the 96 is actually pretty accurate. It's the subsequent shots that tend to get lost along the way. So you can play this like a nozzle nose and shoot them once, wait a little bit, then shoot them again to finish them off, but before they heal away the damage from the first shot. But then why wouldn't you just use a nozzle nose? Anyways, if you find yourself missing a lot of shots, one question you have to ask yourself is, have you been keeping up with your daily affirmations to RN Jesus, the Lord of Luck, day 20th of his name, father of the great casino up above? Because you just have to accept that some of your shots are going to miss. The the Lord giveth accurate shots, and the Lord taketh away! But if you're a sinner and your shots are not leading you to salvation, just keep trying, you know? Sometimes you need to be persistent and chase people down and indoctrinate them with the good word of being lucky. I mean, having good aim. I wish I could take the sub of the Deco and the special of the Vanilla 96 and make them into one weapon, but that would probably be super overpowered, like the 96 Deco in Splatoon 1. Do y'all remember how absolutely broken that thing was for a really, really long time? Because I do. But to put it simply, the regular one is more for offense and the Deco is more for defense, however both are good at getting kills and giving support. The standard 96 gal is all about that armor baby! Sprinkler is best for helping you charge your special faster, but can also be used to paint an area, such as the splat zone. Throw a sprinkler one way, paint the zone another way, you can paint the zone pretty quickly all by yourself. You don't need anyone else, you can just do it alone. All alone. Ink armor is great if you can coordinate it so that you use it right before an offensive push or a defensive stop with your teammates. If you can't do that because your teammates ain't listening, or if you're playing solo, all alone then you can at least protect yourself. It can save your life in a 1v1 as long as you use it at enough time in advance. And activating armor serves as a quick ink tank refill, so you can use it for that too. This is the 96 scale that pretty much everyone will tell you to use because of the ink armor, and well, they're not wrong. However, the Deco can still be a pretty viable option. Splash walls can be useful for a long range weapon like the 96 scale, especially on maps with thin hallways like Port Mac on Camp Triggerfish, the best map in the game. As long as you throw it out in advance before you start shooting, you'll be safer than if you didn't throw one at all. Splash wall can't actually take too much damage, but it's more of a visual deterrent. Some players won't even bother to try to shoot you if they see a wall. Make sure you watch out for bombs though, they'll immediately explode if they contact a splash wall. Also remember that walls fly out at a fixed trajectory through the air, so don't throw them off the map like I do all the time. <laughs> Whoops! And if you're interested in making some big brain plays, you can even trap someone between your main weapon and your splash wall to stop their escape. Splashdown is sort of a mixed bag. It can get a kill through Ultra Stamp, which is good! Plus it can sometimes get you out of a jam, especially if you're getting attacked at close range. If someone survives the splashdown but still takes some damage, it only takes one shot to finish them off. That being said, skilled opponents will be able to kill you before you get your slam jam on, but you don't lose that much meter if you SD in the middle of your SD. The most tactical way to use splashdown is to super jump and then use it in midair. It's faster than the regular one and it's easy to bait people in, since no one uses the splashdown 96 scale, so no one will expect it. Bird up. Hello. That's all the strats I have for the 96 gal. Here's some more tips from some dude I saw tearing it up at the skate park. Hello guys and welcome, it is that SLB2 dude bringing you yet another Splatoon 2 video. Right, the 96 gal. You're either going to really love this weapon as it does everything you tell it to do. Good boy, 96 gal. Or alternatively, you're going to have your crosshair on people and you'll just never hit shots and be the most unluckiest person to ever play this Splatoon 2 game. But wait, what if I told you guys that there's this secret Megamind tip that you can apply when using your 96 gal? If you've ever gone to the training room and used the 96 gal, try aiming at your target a little bit lower towards the feet. For whatever reason, the 96 gal just tends to hit a little bit more when you do that. 
Also, another interesting tip, when you're squidding around, please make sure to not continually auto fire with the 96 scale if you're getting into a fight. Why I say this, you may ask, well, I didn't even know this was actually a thing until the last patch, where if you auto fire with shooters, the longer time you auto fire, the more inaccurate the weapon is going to get. And bearing in mind the 96 gal, yeah, <laughs> Uh, yeah, accuracy is not his friend. So basically, when you're ever trying to fight someone, make sure your first few shots are when you're coming out of a nice swim session. Also, by the way, this weapon has super long range, so try to use this thing where you can actually use the full amount of your range. Or just don't and make the game harder for yourself. Why not? Also, this weapon's very beautiful. It'll get in karmas for you in two seconds. And the splash wool variant will get you very mad, but sometimes may protect you. Either way, you have a fun time using this thing. Or you won't. Back to you, astronaut. The 96 gal uses a lot of ink to dispense all 96 of its gallons, so ink that remain can be really helpful on this. Main power up is also highly recommended. This weapon's shot damage can drop off like Splatoon 2's player base dropped off for Smash Brothers Ultimate and Ninjala and Fall Guys and Among Us and Monster Hunter Rise next year, so yeah, use MPU. Word on the street is, two mains and two subs seems to be the sweet spot to keep the 96's damage bumping, but test it out for yourself and see what works for you. And that's really all you need, honestly. You can never go wrong with some swim speed. Special charge on the vanilla is good for more ink armor sooner, and stealth jump works for both, and especially the deco when you rain down splashdowns. Ink saver sub on the deco can also work, so you can keep shooting for longer after you throw down a splash wall. And that's all I got guys. Thanks to everyone on Twitter for your suggestions. And thank you to the living legend himself, that SRB2 dude, for your advice that's based on literal years of experience for the 96. Dude is a high level professional competitive player and top tier Splatoon content grinder. I got way better at the game just by watching his stuff. If you're not already subscribed to Dude and watching his top tier Twitch streams, what's wrong with you? Now here's some not top tier playing from me to pad out this video's runtime. <laughs>